Hey guys, welcome back. This is Brown for the BTN HD, and yes, uh, another awesome video dealing with MDT and a Windows ICD, which is basically Windows Imaging and Configuration Designer. Uh, I think the last time that I touched base on the Windows ICD was just getting you guys up and running, familiar with the you know the program, and I'm actually using Windows ICD within MDT Build 8443. That is the virtual machine that I'm actually using right now. And I have it up and running. And uh, what we're going to do is create a package. Now creating a package, you get four options with the latest version. You got either simple provisioning, provisioning for school and devices, advanced provisioning, and then Windows image customization. This is really up to you what you want to do. Uh, if you pick advanced provisioning, you're going to enter the project details, location where you want to drop it, and all that good stuff. Just follow the prompts. Uh, I already have a package that I already created. So I'm going to click on this guy just to load up the settings. And right here, this basically gives you a nice little rundown. If, if, if you're a person like me that deals with GPOs, group policy objects, it, it looks just like it. Go within all the settings and configure it the way you want it. Now within this package, I did three things and I'm going to expand it. It'd be cool if they have like one little button to expand all of it. Uh, I created a user account and the user account is called BTNHD. I set a password and I added this guy within the administrative group. Uh, within the OOBE desktop, I set it to hide the OOBE true. And the policies right here to allow App Store auto update, I disallowed that. Now every time you pick these options, right below here it gives you a nice little brief introduction of it. So that's pretty cool. The browser, the home page is going to point directly to here. Okay, so once you do all the configuration stuff on the side, again, I did it I did like really basic stuff. You have the option to deploy it. Now the deploy option is used within like a SCCM environment or you could do the export. The export would create a provisioning package, which is an extension of PPKG. If you click on that, just follow the prompts. Change the owner. The owner, I set it as IT admin, but it's really up to you how you want to configure that. Uh, the version type, the rank, it's really up to you. Just click next, next, and just follow the prompts, and then you're going to get an option to build. I think if you check out the video within the my channel I did the Windows ICD is the same concept of creating a package uh, I dropped everything inside the desktop I created this folder and this is all that good stuff now if you want this to start talking to your MDT what I did is I, I copied the entire folder and I placed it inside my Fire Explorer C Drive and deployment share and within my scripts folder I just dropped that entire folder in here okay so wherever you drop your deployment share folder into when you created your MDT stuff, go inside the scripts and just drop that folder in there. You're good to go. Not yet. Uh, so the next thing is to configure your MDT. Okay. As always, I love creating folders. I'm a huge folder person because I like to keep myself organized. So I created a folder within the task sequence node called Windows 10 PPKG, which PPKG stands for provisioning packages. Uh, I created a standard client task sequence. I called it this. ID is PPKG. And let's double click on it. Okay? Because this is where the secret sauce is at. This is where the package deployment works. So what I did within the install node, outside of it, I created a command line. And I gave it a name of deploy provision package. And this is basically the command that I did. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to open up our notepad and I'm going to paste it. Let's do a control V and let's go into font and let's increase it to 20. Let's make it a little bigger so we can see what's going on. Okay, so I'm using the DISM uh, utility with a parameter of image equals C drive, uh, another parameter of add provisioning package, and that. Then we're adding another parameter of package path, and we're giving it the path of where our package is located. For me, it would be the scripts root folder, the folder, 
and the actual name of the package and make sure you have that extension. Now for this to work within your environment, you have to do a couple of things within your deployment share. Okay, so I'm not going to say that. I'm going to apply that and okay. Got it? Now you're going to right click your primary deployment share and you're going to go to properties. Go to Windows PE tab and pick whatever platform you're deploying. Now I'm deploying 64-bit because you know we're deploying Windows 10 and then 64-bit. Go to features. Now these are the things that I added within my deployment. Uh, make sure that you have the DISM commandlet. Uh, I added .NET Framework and Windows PowerShell. Okay, but I think the one you really need is the DISM commandlet. Right. Next thing that you need to do, just right-click, update your deployment share, and then you're good to go. Got it. So what I'm going to do is exit out of full screen within my VM work session. Again, I love doing everything in a virtual environment, and let's go inside our uh, root server. Go into this guy and let's create a folder. We're going to call it bj-ppkg. I am going to copy this path, right? And we're going to close that. And within my virtual environment, I'm going to go to File, New Virtual Machine. Go to Next, Next. It's going to be a Windows 10 64-bit. We're going to click on Next. I'm going to drop it in that path that we uh, did together. And the name of the server is going to be uh, bj-ppkg, hit enter. I'm going to leave it at 60 gigs, hit enter, and hit enter to finish it. Awesome. Now, uh, I already went inside my WDS. My WDS is already up and running. I updated my boot image to the latest one. And what we're going to do is start this virtual machine so we can get inside our virtual environment. And I'm going to F12. Uh, within my environment, I do have DHCP running and 64-bit. If you're probably saying, why do you have 64-bit and not 86-bit? If you go inside my NDT server and you go inside my WDS, let's go to servers, go inside the node, boot images. I only have the 64-bit. That's the only reason why you don't see 64-bit and 86. I'm only advertising the 64-bit boot image. So let's go back inside our, our server. And right now it is loading all the particular files that it needs to run properly. Okay, so we have our welcome. And the reason why I have this welcome thing, because again, I did not customize my custom settings I, I file. Shame on me, I know. Uh, we're gonna log in into our uh, deployment share. Make sure that the account that you're using has full access to deploy or get into your MDT server, okay? If not, it, this will not work. Trust me, it will not work. So we're going to do the uh, domain, hit enter. Again, all that information is going to be different on your environment. And if everything goes well, you're going to get this. Now, I am going to pick the Windows 10 PPKG uh, task sequence. Again, the only thing that I did within the task sequence is the following. Double click on this guy right here. And I basically just added that command line right here, right underneath the install folder or node and then gave it this command right here to, to run during the deployment time. Again, I'm going to add all this information on my site. The link should be at the bottom of the video. If it's not there, just harass me at the comments so I could uh, uh, do it for you guys. So from here, we're going to pick that. Click Next. Let's uh, give it this name right here. Excellence. Hit Enter. Hit Enter. Enter. I don't care about that. I'm not setting any applications and we're going to start begin. Awesome. So right now it's going to reformat the hard drive, start installing the operating system and then push out that uh, provisioning package that we created. And then once it's done, we're going to we're going to check stuff out. All right, guys, so it looks like our deployment has completed and successfully. No errors. Ah, that's always a good thing. Okay, so I'm going to hit no on this and then click finish on that so I could do this initial cleanup. And let's log in into our MDT server because I want to go over a couple of things. 
Awesome. So within our uh, Windows ICD designer, again, we created a username called BTNHD, password, and we assigned it to go into the administrative group. And then we did a couple of other things as well. So let's go inside our uh, machine. And the first thing I want to do, let's right click on our start menu. Let's go inside uh, control panel. And within control panel, let's change the view by small icons. Great. Let's uh, expand it a little bit. Let's go into user accounts. And let's go manage another account. And there goes our BTNHD. How awesome is that? And that's it, guys. That is how you deploy a provisioning package using Windows ICD uh, within your MDT, which is pretty cool. Again, uh, you have to go inside the designer and customize it the way that you want. For me, I just picked really small amounts just to test it out, but you could do a lot more. There's a lot of settings that you could do. I mean, it's crazy. Camera, connectivity, updates. It's just, it's nuts. Look at that. How cool is that? Look at that. I, I can't even set the the active hours start and end. I'm able to allow auto updates. Customize it the way that you want it. Export it out. Push it within your MDT and then you're good to go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Leave comments right below and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.